In this video, let's walk through step-by-step step how to create this interactive checkbox component within Figma. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the actions down here and you're gonna search for Lucid Icons, which is a plugin. From here, we're gonna search for a check and select a check to drop into our screen. So we're gonna build the selected state of the component first. And then when we add the variance, we'll add the default state after that. I just find this is the easiest way to set it up and make sure that everything is in the correct place when you can see it. So from here, we're gonna unclick the lock icon and we're gonna change this to icon wrapper. So this is gonna be the check within our checkbox. So we're gonna make this a bit smaller. We might scale it down to 16 and that actually scaled our icon as well. One thing you might need to just see is that if your constraint option is on or off, you probably want it on as it just keeps every, the aspect ratio. That should make your icon smaller as well and they'll scale down accordingly. Now what we're gonna do is click F on our keyboard and we're just gonna click on the screen to draw a box. So this is gonna be our checkbox item. So we're gonna build this, which I think is the best practice for building design systems, of we wanna build the checkbox item by itself and then we're gonna build the checkbox component which contains the checkbox item. This way, as you scale a design system, it's easier if you need to make a change because you can go down to the smallest item, which is a checkbox item. So now with our checkbox item here, we're gonna click the lock aspect ratio. We're gonna move this down to 16 pixels and now select our icon wrapper. We're gonna drag our icon wrapper within our checkbox item frame that we just made. So now just make sure you select your icon wrapper and center it horizontally and then center it vertically. So if we click Command Y on the keyboard, we can see the outline. And if you look over to the side, you can see that it's within it now. So we're actually gonna make our icon wrapper a bit smaller now. So let's bump this down to 12. And then we just need to realign it again. So click Align Horizontal Center and then Align Vertical Center. Now select our checkbox item. And as I said, we're gonna make this a selected state. So Click fill and select whatever color you wanna make it to be the filled state. Gonna choose this bright blue color with the checkbox item selected. I'm gonna round the corner slightly. And now I'm gonna click into the icon wrapper and change the icon from this black to a white. And the last thing we wanna do is actually add a stroke around the outside and make this the same color as the fill. That will become important when you want to create the smooth interaction from default to selected. So that's the basis of our checkbox made. So now we can select that and come up to the top right and click create component. We're going to add a property, which is going to be a variant property. We're going to name this state. Select outer one here and click this plus icon. And we're going to add two. So this last one will be the selected state. Let's go up to our first one, and this one's gonna be our default state. So to make it our default state, we wanna come into our icon wrapper and click the eye icon to hide it. And then we wanna select the outside box here, and we're gonna change the fill to white, and we're gonna change the stroke color to more of a neutral, unselected gray kind of sort of color. And now this middle one is actually gonna be our hover state. I find this is actually, if you wanna set up those smooth interactions, if you're prototyping it, this is a good option that just adds a little bit more finesse to it. So similar to the default state, we're gonna select in, get the icon wrapper, click the eye within the appearance section, turn that off. We're gonna select the outer wrapper and change the fill from blue to white, which is six Fs. And we're actually just gonna leave the hover state to have that blue stroke so you can tell that you're hovering it. We're not actually gonna add the prototype interactions here, we'll add it in the next one. But this is the bottom kinda most foundation item for our checkbox item as you build it out in your design system. So from here, now that we have our checkbox item make, let's actually make our checkbox component and make it so that it's prototyped. Right click and click copy. We wanna make a copy of this one. Don't drag the original one, we just wanna make a copy. Come over to the side, right click again and paste here. Now click T on your keyboard 
and type out your word. I'm gonna write select. Now I'm just gonna make this much smaller because 32 is too large. I say 16 is probably a pretty standard size. Now select both of these and on your keyboard, click shift A to apply auto layout to it. Make it about eight pixel gap here and we'll make this our checkbox. Now, same as before, top right, click create component and we're just gonna follow these so they match what we have over to the side here. So we're gonna add a property, a variant property again, make this state and we'll add two variants. So the first one will be default and that matches the default. The second one, we're gonna make it the hover state. And then we're gonna click down. This is the power of having kind of nested components is that from here, we can just change the state to the hover. And now this last one will match the selected state. So name this selected and same process again, drill down to select our checkbox item. And we're gonna change this from default to selected. Now with all the bases set up, click prototype in the top right here, and let's set it up so that it actually works if you wanna test it in a prototype. Select your default, and you'll see this little blue icon appear on the right. We wanna drag this noodle from the default to the hover, and we wanna make the trigger while hovering. Change the hover, and then change the animation type from instant to smart animate. Make it about 350 milliseconds as a starting point. And then we want to select the hover state and drag another prototype noodle to the selected state. And we'll make this trigger on click, change to selected, might animate 350. And now to close the loop, select your selected state and drag your final noodle from selected back to default. I'll make this on click, change, default, animation type, smart animate 350. And that's how you can set up a really simple but really powerful checkbox component within Figma. So now if you wanna test that out, make a copy of it and drag it over to your design. This is a design that I'm working on. And we wanna place it in here. And maybe we'll make it, just as an example, make it terms and conditions. So then if we're testing this with a user, select the frame and click present. If you wanted to prototype this and actually test it in front of real people, the power of that you actually do have the hover interaction as well and you have the selected interaction. So if you're setting up some usability testing or AB testing or something like that, you actually would be able to get that input from people because you've actually prototyped it. And that's how really easily to create a really simple but really powerful interactive checkbox component in Figma. Thanks so much for watching. YouTube reckons you'll like this video, so go give that one a watch.